people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India's reputation as a global leader and all-weather friend continues to grow as India increases its maritime cooperation in the Indian Ocean region. After the COVID pandemic, Delhi undertook to provide essential humanitarian aid and support to its Indian Ocean neighbour nations. Unlike expansionist China, under Xi Jinping, the aid that comes from India doesn't have any strings attached and comes from its core principle of Vasudev Kutumkam, the world is one. Let's take a closer look at how India is expanding its role in preserving the stability of its maritime neighborhood. India officially launched Mission Cigar on May 10, 2020, a COVID-19 relief mission with an aim to assist Indian Ocean nations. Mission Cigar was launched to provide rescue, medical care and relief and the Indian Navy deployed ships to several maritime nations, including the Maldives, Mauritius, Madagascar, Comoros, and Seychelles. Over the last 10 years, India has placed a greater emphasis on maritime issues in their foreign policy. Expanding its role as a regional security partner, the Indian Navy is providing essential public goods and defense equipment to a large number of foreign countries. New Delhi, under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, has stated unequivocally that the Indian Ocean region is a priority for India. To promote peace, prosperity, and development within the region, India has always supported her maritime neighbors through natural disasters and economic crises. India's External Affairs Minister, Dr. S. Jai Shankar, recently visited Sri Lanka where he reiterated New Delhi's commitment to helping Colombo while finalizing plans on debt restructuring. Sri Lanka requires India's backing in order to reach a final agreement with the IMF for a loan to help bail the country out of its worst financial crisis in seven decades. India has told the IMF that it strongly supports Sri Lanka's debt restructuring plan, with Colombo owing around one billion to its nearest neighbor. We felt strongly that Sri Lanka's creditors must take proactive steps to facilitate its recovery. India decided not to wait on others, but to do what we believe is right. We extended financing assurances to the IMF to clear the way for Sri Lanka to move forward. An analysis by the Sri Lankan think tank, Verite Research, has found that in 2022, India overtook China to become Colombo's top bilateral lender. New Delhi has also extended its support to another neighboring country, the Maldives, in addressing its economic challenges. Jai Shankar also recently joined Maldivian President Soli at the groundbreaking ceremony for the Hani Madhu International Airport project in the island country. This is the second largest infrastructure project that India has undertaken in the Maldives in recent months, following the 500 million Greater Malay Connectivity Project, which connects the Maldives capital, Malay, to three neighboring islands, with a 6.74 kilometer bridge and causeway over the sea. The Malay Greater Malay Connectivity Project is a very ambitious project. Uh, but a very important one that can help the Maldivian economy a lot because half of the Maldivian population will get connected by this project. It's a 500 million around like USD project, 100 million is been given from India as a grant and 400 million in the line of credit. Apart from extending financial assistance and support, New Delhi's maritime strategy aims to preserve stability in the Indian Ocean region. In furtherance of this objective, 
India has provided support for improved maritime domain awareness to countries like Bangladesh and Myanmar. By enhancing security partnerships with these countries, India will be more successfully able to establish good order at sea. Moving on, Afghanistan is in dire straits. The situation is getting worse by the day. The country is running short and low on everything that a society could ask for. Food, fuel, money, medicine. Afghanistan doesn't have even one section sorted. In the latest blow to its already grim fortunes, around 160 people have succumbed to extreme cold. People say they cannot afford to purchase material required to heat their homes. The Taliban, who have unabashedly imposed sanctions that have contributed greatly to these crises, don't seem bothered at all. There have been some whispers in international power corridors, but that doesn't seem to be solving the problem. Have a look. In what has been described by many as the coldest season the country has faced in over a decade, at least 160 people have lost their lives in the past few weeks. The economic arm of the country, which has been dealt a serious blow post the US forces' departure and the Taliban's return in 2020, has been deteriorating constantly. And the situation has reached a point where the people are unable to afford fuel to heat their homes even during extremely cold temperatures. The images of children rummaging through rubbish looking for plastic to burn as their families cannot afford fuel have left the world wondering what their future would be like. Ashaur Ali lives with his family in a concrete basement where his five children shiver from cold. The coldest winter in 15 years which has seen temperatures dip as low as minus 34 degrees Celsius has hit Afghanistan in the middle of a severe economic crisis. Many aid groups have partially suspended operations in recent weeks due to a Taliban administration ruling that most female NGO workers could not work, leaving agencies unable to operate many programs in the conservative country. Afghans are in dire strait and no help is reaching them. <laughs> The UN aid chief said this week that as many as 6 million people were standing on the cusp of famine as there appear no chances of economic recovery or growth prospects. The country desperately requires both financial assistance and investments in order to emerge from the economic crisis it has plunged under the Taliban era. Although there has been a lot of discussion around supporting Afghanistan, nothing concrete has really manifested on the ground thanks to the Taliban's U-turn on the promises made during peace negotiations. Its systematic crackdown on people, especially on women, has not only pushed the country back to the late 90s era, but have made skeptical even organizations and countries that were genuinely mulling helping the nation living in misery. Moving on, the world is increasingly getting used to the popular phrase of Brand India. The story, which was deemed burgeoning until some time ago, is a force to be reckoned with. It is not just that India is experiencing a prolonged economic purple patch, 
but is set to achieve milestones in other sectors as well. Today, we have brought the story of India's expanding market share in automobile component manufacturing. One of the fastest growing, India will literally be manufacturing smallest cogs in the wheel in coming years and is projected to be the leader in just five odd years from now. Motorbikes and vehicles are some of the most sought after possessions for the aspirational and upwardly mobile expanding Indian middle class. 2022 was a historic year for the Indian automobile sector, with two-wheelers dominating the market, followed by a massive sale of 3.8 million cars. Overall, 17.51 million automobiles were sold in the year. These numbers are a sign that there are going to be more and more motorbikes and cars on Indian roads in times to come. India has historically imported a majority of its automobiles. However, manufacturing trends have shown a shift in recent years, and the growing numbers have benefited Indian coffers as well. India has become one of the most sought-after markets for manufacturing of automotive parts in the world, owing to its location and inexpensive labor costs. From literally manufacturing the smallest cogs in the wheel, to the most essential car components. India is meeting the needs and demands of both domestic and global consumers. The demand, uh, what we are seeing now, is something we've not seen for the last two decades. Personally, I feel this is the golden era for Indian automotive component industry. Macro indicators are extremely positive as far as the domestic demand is concerned. India's manufacturing industry is not just limited to one segment, but covers the entire range of automobiles from motorcycles to heavy vehicles. The most premier of automobile brands throughout the world have landed in India to source auto parts. As a result of this remarkable rise in the demand of Indian-made automotive parts, the Indian export market alone is poised to touch 30 billion USD by financial year 2026. As per the government's Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, the Indian automotive component manufacturing industry drew foreign direct investments worth 33.54 billion USD between April of 2000 and June of 2022. The numbers are expected to grow sharply in coming years, with several efforts being made to multiply the industrial outputs. Everybody has clearly realized the issue that we need to be sustainable at the fastest. Uh, there's a strong push from the government. There's a strong push being Atmanirbhar, which is an excellent initiative, whereby it forces all of us to you know, look inside uh, to see that how can we localize not only the components, but we are talking of localizing the design, the development, the machinery, to what we call in auto terms, deep localization. The Indian government has taken many proactive steps to ensure that the Indian automotive industry does not hit any roadblocks going forward. The government has already paved the way for global players to enter the market with 100% foreign direct investment allowed under the automatic route for the auto component sector. Additionally, the government's production-linked incentive scheme, which has already garnered praise across the board, along with consistent efforts being made to ease business in India, are set to deliver massive dividends. It is expected that India will receive a capital expenditure of around 9.5 billion USD in the next five years. Observers predict that Indian automotive component production will not only become one of the largest in the world, but will also be one of the sectors that will play a major role in the country's gross domestic product. This is just one of the many success stories India is scripting simultaneously. A macro view of the Indian economy shows how all cards are stacking up in favor of brand India. Indian leaders are also ensuring that Brand India not only lives up to the expectation of this is India's decade, 
but also paves a path that will ensure India becomes a developed country by 2047. Time now for Asia This Week, stories from across the continent. South Korean residents expressed concerns over additional hikes in energy bills as the freezing winter weather continued. Earlier this week, South Korea's top presidential economic secretary, Choi Sang mok said the government plans to double energy vouchers and expand a discount of gas prices for underprivileged families to help them cope with spiraling heating bills amid a prolonged cold wave. Choi added that the increase in bills was inevitable, citing a near tenfold growth in global natural gas prices since 2021. The weather agency issued a heavy snow advisory in the greater Seoul area and some eastern and central regions, prompting at least five flights to be called off and several national parks to shut down. Hundreds of people demonstrated near central bank headquarters in Baghdad to protest against the recent slide of Iraqi dinar against the dollar that has triggered a rise in prices of imported consumer goods. Hundreds from different Iraqi regions waved Iraqi flags or carried banners demanding government intervention to stop the dinar's decline to around 1,620 to the greenback from 1,470 in November. The dinar went into a tailspin against the dollar after the New York Federal Reserve imposed tighter controls on international dollar transactions by commercial Iraqi banks in November to halt the illegal siphoning of dollars to neighboring Iran, which is under tough US sanctions. Under the curbs that took effect this month, Iraqi banks must use an online platform to reveal their transaction details. But most private banks have not registered on the platform and resorted to informal black markets in Baghdad to buy dollars. Dozens of anti-riot policemen were deployed around the central bank building and surrounding streets, but no clashes or arrests were reported. Prime Minister Mohammad al-Sudani replaced the central bank governor as he had not taken effective steps to tackle the consequences of the new Fed regulations and their impact on the dinar. Making sushi is a work of art in Japan. Good handwork is a must for this delicious dish. That is because the curation and consumption of sushi date back to ancient Japan. Celebrating the history and love for this great dish, a Sushi Chef's World Championship was recently held at the Toyosu Market in Tokyo. This was the 10th edition of the event. Finalists from 9 countries including 15 sushi chefs from US, Europe, Asia and South America participated in the event. For the first time, Bangladesh has participated in the competition. Apart from that, four finalists in the competition were from France. It shows the increasing popularity of sushi in the European countries. Satsuki Katayama is a member of the upper house in the Japanese parliament and a sushi enthusiast. She emphasizes that sushi is a global dish. In one hour, the finalists have to cook creative sushi. Some sushi chefs prepare unique ingredients such as chocolate, port wine, marinated fish and so on. Marking points are creativity, skill to operate kitchen knife, cutting skill and management of sanitary situation. The winner of the competition was a Czechoslovakian chef. He was appreciated for his nigiri skill and the beauty of his creations. Competitions like these are helpful in promoting sushi all around the world and slowly but steadily, it is becoming quite common to see people in various countries enjoying a sushi. This is Taki town in Shimane Prefecture, Japan. 
In the souvenir section of the parking area, there are products made from figs, a special product that is boosting the tourism industry of the country. The fig soft ice cream was developed in collaboration with the soft cream maker Nisei, which is slowly becoming popular among tourists. A mixture of fig soft cream and fig and vanilla soft cream is sold at the kiosk. Soft cream helps the visitors relax. Vanilla to Ichijiku, Ishu, Ni, Tabe, Ru, Koto, De, Nanka, Nen, Te, Un, Da, Ru, Na. Amasa to Kono, Chotto, Ichijiku, No, Sappari, Sa, Ga, Ishu, Ni, Tabe, Rete, Nanka, Oi, Shi, Des. The texture of fig soft ice cream is unique. The cream is kneaded with small fig seeds. Nisei infuses local flavors into soft creams to popularize Japanese soft creams around the world. Fig soft cream, which has a sweet and mysterious texture, is becoming popular among foreign tourists. Moving on. India is not just home to different cultural, linguistic or ethnic minorities, but has been homely and hospitable to people of other nationalities as well. India's centuries-old belief and the motto of Vasudev Kutumbakam manifests in the form of Indian treatment towards foreigners, even to those with whom it doesn't really share good ties. China has been consistently trying to alter the status quo along the India-China line of actual control and the two sides' armies have been engaged in skirmishes, but that has not compelled Delhi to abandon its core ideals. Today in our cultural section, we show how people of the Chinese community living in India celebrated their new year with the same amount of freedom and fervor. Some argue even more, they would have done it in their homeland. A large number of members of the Chinese community recently gathered in India's eastern Kolkata city to offer prayers to mark their new year this week. They were also engaged in celebrations as they held a ceremony for new year after two years of Covid break. This year marks the year of the rabbit. In the Chinese calendar, each year is represented by one of the 12 animals from the Chinese zodiac. Today is our Chinese New Year. We are celebrating in the Chinese market out here. As you can see the lightning, the dragon dance going out here. Every once a year, this year is the year of the rabbit, where everyone has come here to meet up and enjoy and celebrate Chinese New Year together in this Changra market. The streets of Kolkata's Chinatown, known as Tangra, was decorated with colourful lights as devotees offered prayers at Hindu goddess Kali temple, enjoyed dragon dance, watched fireworks and greeted each other with hugs to wish each other. The idol of goddess Kali is similar to the ones found in Hindu temples across the country. The temple resembles any other place of worship for the Hindus. It's been really lively and I think we're all here super happy uh, meeting our relative and family so yeah we're just spreading love here. The festival's many customs observed by millions of Chinese communities around the globe all link back to the idea of inviting good fortune and prosperity and chasing away bad luck. Not only does India possess great civilizational ethos, but has always been welcoming to the people world over. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.